Je vais demander au président Ishilema peut-être de, de revenir sur ces sujets, mais aussi sur la question de la dette, en le félicitant à nouveau pour l'accord qui a été trouvé pour euh, renégocier la, la dette de, de Zambie. Monsieur le président, nous vous écoutons. Thank you very much, uh, President Macron, and uh, for hosting us and for everything else that my colleagues have already uh, mentioned. Um, um, so thank you. I also want to thank um, all of us, heads of state and government that are present here, and our partners, um, our own institutions, multilateral institutions, and obviously uh, I do appreciate that uh, we have other stakeholders that are here, so thank you very much. Let me be abusive a little bit, President Macron, and start by doing what is necessary uh, on behalf of the, our people, people of Zambia, to thank, to thank greatly the achievement for the achievement that was scored yesterday. One of the deliverables for this summit, and President Macron is aware, I came down here and requested that, uh, obviously, also the President of China, uh, that we should ensure that by the time this summit takes place, we'll have delivered the Zambia debt restructuring uh, project. And as at yesterday, this is one of the deliverables at this summit. Thank you to China. Thank you to France for chairing the G20 framework. Thank you to South Africa for being the deputy chair for this process. And also to all of the countries that in one way or another supported this process to reach the conclusion it did yesterday and the benefit it would deliver to other data countries because Zambia was more or less used like a guinea pig and we are now in this situation and we hope that the lessons of that process can be learned and learned correctly and be applied to the other processes that will commence starting I believe uh, uh, following this, this summit. I must give special thank, thank you to the U.S. government for their support, European Union for their support. Indeed, most of us as data countries also are speaking to each other, speaking to each other, learning from each other. Thank you very much. Let me move quickly to the issue of, um, uh, ah, I can't forget creditors. Creditors. Thank you so much to the creditors, all of you diversified as, as you are. Obviously, some are large, some are smaller, but without your cooperation, this was not going to be possible. But I must also say thank you to the people of Zambia for their patience. We took this project as one of our responsibilities before we formed government as an opposition uh, party that debt restructuring was a critical deliverable for us. And the people of Zambia we're very patient, extremely patient, pain on the other side because of the, st the structural adjustment, the structural processes. And if there's one lesson that I want to share with other countries, that leadership is crucial at a country level to be clear of what you want and say so to your people. The people may not support everything that's necessary, institutional reform consumption expenditure controls, I dare say, habits of corruption are enjoyed by many in our countries. And when you put reforms, you confront them as well. But it's important to be intentional as leaders and then deliver that to our communities. They will go through the pain, but they will support you as Zambians have done that. Thank you very much to the people of Zambia. Let me co put context to this. Poverty, climate change. We have already argued that these are intertwined. There's no question about it. Let me draw the first aspect of the connection. Even before we talk about financing, new financing, more financing, when countries are not growing, economically. You cannot expect a poor person to carry an additional burden. That is necessary to drive growth, to drive development. 
So poverty actually exacerbates the climate change mitigation measures, I argue. And it's very clear. If you are asking your poor people to switch energy sources, can they afford from charcoal to cleaner energy? They're already stressed. So we need to find mechanisms to support the poor in our countries, less privileged. I heard this word called poverty, the poor, but the less privileged to be able to come through to support the changes that are required to mitigate climate change negative effects. I think that's very, very important. It's also true to say climate change on the flip side has imposed new obligations on the less privileged. For example, the farmer you saw, the farmer you went to visit, um, um, Secretary Yellen, Treasury Secretary Yellen, before they could, on one hectare, produce, two hectares produce enough for themselves and an excess for sale. But climate change measures have made it one season, the same rain season, one part of it is a drought. When the rain comes, it's a flood, one season. What chance does that farmer have? They absolutely don't have. So as we talk about climate change mitigations, financing, support, technology, farming methods, issues of genetics in agriculture, early maturing varieties. I'm just giving an example. Context are important to consider. So it's not just laying the resource envelope on the table. It is digging inside that envelope. How do we apply that envelope in order to take care of the challenges that have arisen from climate change? and therefore the investments being directed in those specific areas that will pro produce results that will assist the less privileged to first produce food for themselves, to also produce excess for revenue to look after their households. But also it's important to look at water harvesting as an area of investment, to look at irrigation, Chairman Chancellor, the technology comes in and it's all there, it's available around the world. It's a question of pulling it together and targeting it. Let me also indicate here one of the lessons of our debt restructuring that is applicable to poverty reduction, to climate change, is the issue around speed at which we do things. G20 framework when we took office 21 months ago, this discussion was already in train. Now we've been in office 21 months. Yes, we're very pleased that it happened yesterday. But for the countries that are coming after us, there is need to expedite the processes. Just that, whether it's, if you like, energy transition, as Senegal was involved, is involved in that, we must just be conscious of time. Every day we don't deliver these things that are within our control. We are basically increasing the cost and the damage gets compounded. I think it's very important. The next lesson I want to suggest here, relevant to the subject on the table, is that um, German Chancellor's point yesterday at dinner, repeated today, is so important for us as a global community to mobilize resources, yes, but these resources must be invested to help grow the economies of the less developed countries. Very important. Because by doing that, we are creating capacity in those economies to mitigate against climate change and obviously poverty reduction. So value addition, not just with the electric vehicle industry, that is coming through, huge industry. It is important, President Macron, that we look at deliberately investing in extraction, critical minerals, for example, in value adding these minerals in country. Obviously, that will help the growth side of the GDP, create jobs, business opportunities for 
the transactional chain in there, if I may call it that. So I think this must be deliberate as well. Rather than generic discussions, we must dive deep into the envelope and begin to say these are requirements, these are needs, these are minimums. And it will mutually benefit, as somebody said yesterday, not to polarize the conversation, the North and the South. It will definitely, if it's structured properly, benefit the North, the South. And that's not the debate we must be engaging in, but mutuality for greater good, for a safe world, for a world that we can pass on to the next generation in a responsible manner. Lastly, I simply want to indicate that uh, I like the spirit of partnership that I hear. I like what I hear from leaders, all of you who have spoken. I think that's the way it should be. But the thing is now to pull all this in one basket, draw an action plan, which is time bound, and we get a job done. If the political leadership is there, business leadership is there, decisions are clear, we now need to get our technical people not to sit on the work that needs to be done. So supervision, monitoring is important. Lastly, and this is the last one really, I want to thank what I hear from the Chinese Premier, what I hear from Secretary Yellen, and indeed all the leaders that have spoken on the issue of conflict. We cannot achieve what we want to achieve if we allow our global community to focus time, resources, everything, technology, on conflict. I think there's a duty for us all to keep our individual countries peaceful, out of conflict, and not export instability to other countries, neighboring or far away. As we now know, instability anywhere is instability everywhere. I think it's very important that we work on that issue and focus the resources, focus the time, and all the other capital provisions on the development agenda to mitigate climate change, to reduce poverty. And, and I must also indicate here, the cost of capital must sit in this basket, that it must be lowered. The inequity around the cost of capital, Africa, for example, pays the highest cost of capital, is not correct. It doesn't help anybody at all. It just worsens the situation. We must address this situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, President.